Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. Welcome to our studio presentation. We are Liana Glass, Jonathan Q, Timothy Luke, and Mackenzie Walker. And today we will be sharing this presentation on our studio project Towards Sustainable Housing. We are happy to have been partnered on this project with the tsleil Nation, and we respectfully acknowledge that we live and work on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples of the tsleil Squamish, and Musqueam Nations. And to clarify, please note that we use the acronym TWN to stand in throughout this presentation for the tsleil Nation. To begin with a summary of our project, the land this project concerns is the tsleil Reserve, which sits on the Burrard Inlet, surrounded by the District of North Vancouver. What we were asked to do was support the development of a new subdivision by focusing on design principles that support sustainability. As the Tsleil-Waututh community continues to grow, the need for additional housing grows as well, which is complicated by the limitations of space and infrastructure within the reserve. A housing needs assessment from the nation suggests a need of more than 100 units, and this number is going to grow. Here, within the reserve, you can see the site TWN has chosen for their new community subdivision. Paramount in the creation of this new neighborhood is to achieve the visions and goals which have been established by TWN through their land use plan, which in part seeks to have TWN become leaders in environmental stewardship and sustainable housing. The challenge comes in building this high quality and affordable neighborhood while maximizing available space and minimizing removal of the forest. Summarizing all of this up in a single sentence, our team's ultimate goal was to develop materials that can best encompass and help realize the vision and goals of the nation when used to support development of the new community subdivision. Next, we can walk you through the steps of how we went about achieving this. Here you can see the four phases that our project was broken into. On the left-hand side, our first phase consisted of conversations with TWN, site visits, and a literature review of other housing strategies. This phase focused on learning about our partners and working with them to establish the goals and scope of our project. Phase two of our project was meant to help identify inspirational and innovative design concepts through which TWN's new neighborhood could achieve their visions and goals. We began with an analysis of TWN's land use plan and previous engagement data, and doing so, identified five guiding principles. These guiding principles were environmental stewardship, affordability, adaptability, connectivity, and indigenous identity. These guiding principles helped us organize our research into innovative and sustainable design concepts. For phase three of our project, we sought to ground these design concepts relating to each guiding principle through community engagement and analysis. Given our limited time, this entailed one engagement with the TWN community, which was held on February 11th during a land tenure meeting. During this session, we were able to conduct a democracy activity, a survey, and collect comments. After analysis of the responses to the engagement and through consultation with TWN staff, it was decided that we would use this information to develop exploratory design guidelines. So finally, for phase four, the final phase of our project, we can see the end product. The exploratory design guidelines are a variation of traditional design guidelines. Those traditional design guidelines are documents used by planners to make prescriptions and recommendations that are not as stringent as outright bylaws. In that sense, design guidelines help the builders and developers of a new neighborhood to understand and fulfill the community's vision. But the recommendations that our guidelines provide are exploratory. They are meant to enhance the conversation and provide inspiration through preliminary recommendations. Due to time limitations, our team cannot perform an exhaustive process which would be necessary for such an influential document. As such, the areas we have chosen to include in the exploratory design guidelines are the ones which we identified as emerging most clearly from the land use plan and engagement. These components are built form, public realm and streetscape, paths and trails, parks and open space, stewardship, building and landscaping materials, and neighborhood character. In conclusion, this new community subdivision provides TWN with an incredible chance to implement the best building practices, design concepts, and standards in environmental, economic, and social sustainability, as well as considering net zero or even net positive environmental design. It is an opportunity for TWN to showcase themselves as leaders. For the design guidelines to continue providing support in this capacity, their development will entail more work and future research, such as a rigorous and ongoing community engagement process. This also means more research to complete the sections of the guideline that are missing. We hope that with ongoing research and engagement, these guidelines will support TWN in their ambitions to go beyond developing new housing and towards building an inspirational and exemplary neighborhood. We would like to give thanks to the tsleil Nation for having us join them in this project, and our sincere thanks to our studio peers and professors for facilitating this project and being here with us all the way. Thank you.